that gives you a nice little green uh, padlock for your website. Um, so basically, I'm just going to say this right now. This presentation is largely going to cover HTTPS because that's the only protocol I really know well. And um, but Let's Encrypt allows for many different aspects. So, first question: What is SSA HTTPS, anyways? So, from a very layman's point of view, it's HTTP plus security. Basically, anything you do on the internet is easily figured out what is actually going on if you're not using HTTPS. If you are using HTTPS, it's basically all encrypted, and Wireshark will not be able to pick up anything that goes through. So any of your passwords, communications, uh, banking information, anything can be easily picked up through this bunch of greenness instead of this nice blueness and blackness <laughs> that prevents it. There we go. So here's just the quickest explanation exactly how HTTPS works. Uh, the client computer sends a client hello command. Uh, they, they send basically this, this message to the servers with its TLS version, which is uh, transport, layer socket, transport Layer Security, stands for. The TLS version, what chipper set algorithms it, it allows, and of course, what, what compression methods are available. Yeah. The server then replies with server hello message. It, with the with its TLS, its selected chipper set from what the chipper set that was sent, and then of course uh, which compression message it allows. Uh, this, this also sends over the certificate's public key, which then is used within the process to, to actually identify between the secure connection between the two. So the next thing, the the web browser or the client computer checks the trusted certificate authorities that it, that are stored within the computer itself and make sure that it's a valid certificate. Um, from within that, next thing, it sends basically, um, it, it sends a, a random, random assortment of bits, which is then encrypted by the public key sent over. So that, and um, this is used to, to demonstrate a, a semantic key between the two sites. Um, from within the next step, so the server decrypts it, because it has a private key, it's able to decrypt it, and now they both have um, what did I call it? Sorry. Uh, oh, I didn't have what I called it. Uh, they both have a session key for this session of the SSO. <clears throat> Next, the client sends the finish command. With the, <laughs> with the encrypted hash transmitted to it as well. And misspelled again, <laughs> it sends it back <laughs> to the client that verifies the process. Now, during this process, after this, basically there's a fingerprint identity between the two, and they both understand each other and are able to communicate through the secure socket, with both understanding that each other and there's no man in the middle between them. Right? Yay! Now, you might be asking, does HTTPS solve everything? No, it doesn't. Uh, programmers are still bad at programming and still have security vulnerabilities in their website. So it's not a catch-all. And this is actually one of my major issues. My, the major thing I love about Let's Encrypt is it's getting back to what SSL and HTTPS was in the beginning, a secure connection between two points. Because in the end of the day, that's all we want. We want some verified, secure way of knowing that you're checking your personal email is not being manned in the middle, or you're at a coffee shop being hacked, or something of that nature. It also provides, without the complex, complexity of setting up your own CA or self signed certificates, verifying them in the whole bother that that could happen, especially with mobile devices. So, this is, sorry, this is a federal alternative to CA um, So, CA cert, I believe, is Start SSL, is who runs that. It was one of those, you know, you have to find other people you can trust when you sign them and they sign you. Yeah, so I have never dealt with that. I know Mike Kelly's has, and he has nothing good to say about it. <laughs> <laughs> and I trust him on most things of that nature. Uh, Tom? Start SSL and CA Cert. Because uh, I know Start SSL used to provide uh, free SSL certs, but they were bought by another company recently that isn't very good and is and is um, 
giving like signing certificates that aren't actually legitimate for that. Um, they're signing certificates that aren't legitimate. Uh, they're signing other people's domains, you know, that aren't verified correctly. Um, so they might be in the process of getting their, their CA or their root certificate data. So, how does Let's Encrypt actually work? How do you get an SSL key? So there's three major components to Let's Encrypt. There's the server, which is called Boulder. There's the client, which is called Let's Encrypt. Uh, there's a number of plugins that are actually also included in the Let's Encrypt, which I'll go over quickly. And then there's a protocol, which is called the Acme protocol. So, Boulder is written in Go. Um, it's basically used for handling all the CA type of, of negotiations. Uh, it does uh, issuing of certificates, renewal of certificates, and revoking of the certificates. And of course, because it's, a, it's, it's pretty open source, because uh, it's basically sponsored by Mozilla and uh, the Linux Foundation, among others. Uh, Let's Encrypt is the actual client. Uh, it's written in Python. Uh, it's, it's responsible for actually doing interface between the client and the server. Oh my god, my brother. Sorry. Okay. Um, where, where was I? Handles your certificate, interactions. Oh, yeah. So basically, Boulder, the server, which I'll go back to quickly, is basically a glorified REST API server. So it sends a REST request basically saying, this is me in the verification process. It kind of begins. Um, so there's, of course, plugins for the Let's Encrypt client application. Um, they basically help for the automation of the actual certificates being installed. Uh, these plugins are for like Apache, Nginx, um, Caddy, it doesn't have a plugin, but Caddy's actual web server has built in Let's Encrypt support. Um, that's currently it right now in terms of those support methods. Uh, the Acme, of course, is how this stands for Automated Certi Certificate Management Environment. And this is, how, um, this is how the actual communication is laid out. So anyone can actually take most of the Let's Encrypt code, or I mean, most of the protocol, and re-implement it however they want. Um, I'm actually using a, a re-implementation of the client protocol on a Windows box to give an SSL cert to ISS, which is pretty cool in my opinion because it does it actually automated, which is incredible for Windows. <laughs> um, it exchanges the data through something called JWS, which is basically uh, JSON signed things, J sorry, JSON signed documents. So basically it signs with the private key of Let's Encrypt and then sends it off, similar to how SSL works. Um, it's a really interesting way, actually, how it does it. So it does basically two things. It provides the client, it proves that the client is the owner of the certificate. Um, it obtains new certificate for the domain, and it takes, it takes revoking a new certificate. Uh, it does revoking and renewing a new certificate. Um, so if you want more, more detailed information on the entire process, that did not come <laughs> um, you, you should definitely watch this two hour long talk about it in entirety because I have 10 minutes and can't go over that much of that data. But um, if anyone has any burning questions about it, do you have about the, the protocol or anything I, that I can answer in a short amount of time? Chris? I care, I care less about the protocol and more of the I sort of like to be. I, I wonder if Let's Encrypt is suitable for me to put uh, authentication to use HTTPS on my simple ish website. Yes, it is so definitely. I, so the notion would be how much of this do I need to grab to make that work? So I'll be going over that in a little bit. Okay. <laughs> so. Of course, like any systems, there's drawbacks to it, and there's a couple to Let's Encrypt. Um, so the first thing is that there's no organization or extended validation certificates. Does anyone not know what those two things are? Scott, okay, I'll explain. <laughs> organization certificate, uh, or, organization validation certificates are when you actually get an SSL certificate that is verified that you, as an organization, own it. So there's banking information, there's register trademark, stuff like that that's basically submitted. An extended verification certificate is basically the same, but much more amount of actual oomphla having to go into it. So this is 
Um, most banks have an extended val ver um, validation certificate. This also includes um, the vast majority of which includes some type of insurance that's built on top of it. So, you know, 100% we will not get this signed by another issuer because you've spent this amount of money to make sure that happened. Um, it's pretty important for what it does, um, but to be perfectly honest, in Let's Encrypt world, where you're just, you know, uh, you're basically on an SSL cert for your company's website, that's just like the marketing homepage or your own personal stuff, you don't really need an organization or extended validation certificates. They're also too expensive for anything of like that. So, oh, there is of course no wild cards, but apparently the support for this is coming soon. I don't like wild cards. I personally think that this is crazy, and Let's Encrypt and the Mozilla and Linux Foundation are stupid for doing this, for the one major reason that wild cards will lead to larger phishing scams on poor innocent users. Um, but yeah, even though that doesn't really matter, it's gonna come anyways. Okay. And of course, the only way to verify that you own the domain is through HTTP. <laughs> DNS is coming, but it's currently in beta. If you do the manual steps, you can do the DNS. That's through curl. Yeah, but I mean, that's in beta. That's not currently done. Like, it's not, it's, in, it's not like the current way of doing it, and it could change. So if you have any automated processes, and your cert dies, <laughs> it's not a good idea to, to bank on that, basically. Um, the DNS verification also, in my opinion, is bad, but that's another kind of whole thing. What does that mean? Uh, so HTTPS verification, so basically what it does is it takes, um, <coughs> do you know the dot well known directory? No. Okay, so there's this great new thing called the dot well known directory, that's an HTTP, so you have your domain slash dot well dash known, and so that directory is supposed to be where you store everything like this, that is like, this is a unique place that we're gonna toss everything in, basically. So instead of having like weird .t, like, I don't know if you've ever verified your site on Google, but it's like Google 128 blah, 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 randomness.txt. So it's basically replacing that and putting it in a good directory that will always be hidden. So basically how Let's Encrypt works is it does the validation through that directory, so it creates a number of signed JSON files in uh, .well-known well slash uh, acme-challenge, and it tosses those JSON files in there, and then from there it actually does, it, it verifies that you own that domain and everything perfectly fine. Um, that's how it works. Now the DNS way is basically where you have, um, any, what do you call it, an encrypted or, or fingerprint? Would you call it an encrypted or fingerprint? Fingerprint. It's a fingerprint because the encrypted can be held into a DNS entry. It's probably encrypted. Though. It's just a, it, it's the cha the challenge token ends up as a text record. Yeah, no, I'm just trying to think if you would refer to that as an encrypted blob or a fingerprint of that encode. I think it's a fingerprint of it. So basically, it takes a fingerprint of the encryption that's go well the the fingerprint of the actual signing of the key, and you put it into your DNS into an entry which is a, a TXT record and then it's stored there, and then it's used for verifying. Um, of course, that is still in beta, so it might change in a couple of years. Probably won't, but if you have any automated process that you have set it and forget it, the, the, the better way is to do the HTTPS verification. It still sounds weird, like why have a DNS set? Well, that's the DNS set. I don't really know enough of to, to say why you use or not use DNS set. I wouldn't use DNSSEC because I, I think it's very complicated. <laughs> and not many people are actually supporting DNSSEC right now. Like it's still pretty underwhelmingly it has support as I, as I remember. I think it tends to be, zones tend to have handfuls of domains. Yeah. But that's the logical way to verify domains using that DNS. But I mean, but if. But, uh, Hugh, we're not trying to verify domains. We're trying to verify that a server at a given domain name is owned by the person requesting the certificate for the server at the <coughs> domain name. And so what this is about is putting a piece of verifiable information queryable on that server or on that server's DNS that Let's Encrypt can publicly 
query to validate you on that domain. And there's a basic assumption there that if you own the DNS for that box or if you own the web route for that box, then you are able to put that information in there for Let's Encrypt to validate you. This, this also allows for things such as like if you didn't buy a domain and you have a subdomain, you can still get an HTTPS, um, an HTTP, uh, sorry, an SSL cert. Um, there's a lot of benefits to it. Of course, um, one of the drawbacks of Let's Encrypt is that it doesn't allow for IPs. So even though it has this entire process, IPs are still disallowed. Um, yeah. So to answer Chris's question, how do you get a certificate? All right. In three easy steps. You go here to certbot.eff.org. I'll wait till you stop right here. Okay. Uh, all right. Cert done. At certbot.eff.org. You select your software that you're using for your web server, the system that you're on, Debian, Ubuntu, what version, etc. You then follow the two steps it takes to install it, <coughs> and then you now, oh, that was the wrong slide to go back. Sorry. You, you now have an HTTPS certificate on your site. You're probably asking yourself, why don't I go through the entire setup process of this I wasted, I don't know how many minutes of my life listening to you. I did this for one major reason. It's simple, it's easy, there is no need to go into detail about how to install or use Let's Encrypt. You should just be using Let's Encrypt. That is all. It is not a complicated process. Frankly, this is the first thing I think in open source that has ever been this simple to do. And this has always been a pain. This. People have listened and come up with a great, easy solution. You could do this, like, while I've done this talk, you could have got this done. It's that easy and takes that little amount of time. The only thing I will, will kind of recommend, um, if you are doing any automation similar to Ansible, Puppet, what have you, that you use the test uh, Acme protocol endpoint that Let's Encrypt has. That way you don't get banned by your IP or domain name because that will happen if you do repeated requests for a certificate. It's a way to prevent um, fraud and things of that nature. So yeah. So, a quarter of the websites are currently actually using Let's Encrypt currently, which is pretty awesome. It's well supported on pretty, actually, basically every modern web browser. I don't know of any old web browser that doesn't support it because they don't matter anymore. Um, it is definitely time that you use Let's Encrypt to, to commit to do it to, to securely safe in your HTTP protocol. So, does anyone have any questions? Yes. Um, is there any plan to have the certificates last longer than three months? No. That is a feature, not a bug. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> why, why is that a feature? Um, it allows for basically de, de um, phishing attempts. So as it, okay, this is actually one of the major problems, in my opinion, of Let's Encrypt and why the wildcard thing is just crazy is I can't remember the exact count, but Ars Technica has a great article where it's something like 10,000 domains have like Royal Bank of Scotland, Royal Bank of Canada, dot whatever, right? And if you've seen any person who's not really a computer savvy web browser with a gazillion extensions there that take up most of the thing, they're most likely not going to see a full domain name. So they're going to see the, you know, uh, what would be a, like um, Bank of America, as an example, would probably take up, let's say, Bank of America dot evil person dot com. Bank of America will most likely take up that entire address bar space and they won't see evil person dot com. So it's really, and you, you're like, you're probably thinking, well, I'm smart. I'm not going to get blocked by phishing attempts. Phishing attempts are amazingly good nowadays. Like they are pitch perfectly matching the emails to like a great extent. You generally have just a split second to remember if it's fake or not. So it is like really well done how they're doing it. And our current, the only way that geeky people have thought about fixing this is basically doing a man in the middle of the SSL. So um, Kaparsky, Norton, the different internet security kind of tools are actually having their own SSL CA that's in front of yours, and it's doing this proxy method. So they're basically being like, oh, this URL has Bank of America in it. 
but it's not the certificates for Bank of America. So we're going to say that this is a phishing site and refuse access. And that's the only way. And that's a horrible security feature. Like that's that means that like some government some government official can strong arm that company and be like, hey, allow this. You know, we want to be able to man in the middle Gmail. So like that's the problem is that's our only option right now to prevent those types of things. And wildcard certificates and more than three months windows on certificates are all ways to prevent that from happening. Now, of course, why isn't like that? Why aren't Let's Encrypt going through like a regex of you know Bank of America is all blocked out and stuff? I don't know. They should be though, because phishing is a serious issue and it's getting better and better with each passing time because it's so minimum to set up and people get attacked by it all the time. It's it's like. How much could it cost to send an email now? It's nothing, right? And you send it on such a large amount, more than likely you're going to hit something. Yeah. Sorry for ranting about that. <laughs> <laughs> Why? That doesn't explain the three months, does it? Well, the three months is just a period. It's, it's long enough to be OK, but it's short enough to, to have some way of getting around it. It's also, it kind of makes it so that there is a reason. Like, Let's Encrypt kind of had this they have an uneasy relationship with current SSL providers, where current SSL providers are angry at them for basically providing their service for free. So it's a way to be like, hey, you know, this still requires every three months to get a new certificate. You know, it's not the worst thing That's if you let us. Yeah. Um, now, of course, uh, the the second one on that. What's it called again? Sorry. Uh, Digimon, which I don't think is. There, Digi Digi Digicert, that's it. Digicert, Digicert is actually suing, I don't remember who, but somebody in the Let's Encrypt sponsorship area saying that they came up with the three month certificate and have a patent on it so that Let's Encrypt's not allowed to use it. Um, I don't think that's, that's gonna be successful because I mean, a three month certificate anyone could make, it's not a difficult patent process to disprove. They patented the time. Yeah, the time frame. It was back when like every computer pat computer science related patent was being like introduced. I believe that. It, no, it's not a business process because that's not allowed to be patented. But I believe it was one of those iffy things. Like same thing with the one click thing. I'm sorry to keep rambling, Scott. Uh, to address the uh, why three months is useful, um, if you if you're working in the enterprise space, renewing once a year is a pain because the person who's doing it is usually not the same person. At three months, you have a chance to catch the person who set it up and say, hey, why isn't this fully automated like you claimed it was? It broke here and here. <laughs> so it's within the realm of catching errors and fixing errors and forcing you to automate it so that uh, it's, it's handled reliably. And that is actually a Taylor Swift recommendation. Is that we remove the SSL certificates to be a shorter time period, so that it, like, because I believe Yahoo three years, no, two years ago, had their SSL certificate expire for like their email, and I mean, that was I think it was an extended certificate for like four or five years, so they didn't know like the person obviously moved on or forgot or something, and they had this whole issue. I think it only lasted like five hours, but that was five hours of bad downtime. If you're not doing it regularly, you don't know how to do it reliably. Yeah. Like, uh, I work with Racket these days. They accidentally removed Racket.com, star.racket.com certificate, <laughs> and they renewed it. All of a sudden, oh, how do we fix that? <laughs> so, uh, any more questions? Uh, Greg. Well, my question for now is uh, releasing a lot. Some of the things that run with you are. Uh, you have the three months if you're doing it fraudulent. You can only renew it uh, when it was one month or less. Left. Oh, so you know what I do to, to solve that is I use OpenSSL. I have a kind of complex uh, grep thing that basically says, is it within, I believe the, it's um, it's two weeks before the three months is up. So that's two months and a half, I believe. So basically it does a quick SSL to see the length of the certificate and how much time is done. And then if it hasn't passed that amount, it, does, it says like, we're not renewing it because there's not enough time. But then the second it does, it actually renews it. And I have that set on a, a weekly basis. So it basically provides me with enough things, um, not enough things, enough of a padding 
between the different things. Uh, currently, GTA Log is using that way to, to update our, G, our, our SSL certificate, which GTA Log.org is using Let's Encrypt for our SSL certificate. So another thing, uh, why use HTTPS? The big reason now is if you want to do HTTP2, because you need a certificate in order for a browser to use HTTP2. So it's a big one right there. Even if you don't care about the security, you get the performance of HTTP2. Also, also you get better SEO, if that matters to you. Um, Google is going to start ranking H, um, S, uh, HTTPS sites higher than, H, than plain HTTP sites. I know that's not like the, this in room is probably doesn't really care about that thing, but it does mean that like, you know, Miles Braceway will be at the bottom of the wrong, me, I will be at the bottom of results instead of the top. Yeah. That's just myself, I have that problem. Anyway. Another thing that comes up is if you're in a low balance environment, it gets difficult because now you have to uh, share this private uh, certificate between all your servers. Your servers can't individually request a certificate, they need to share the same one because you're limited to the number of um, certificate requests per domain. Aren't you just using the load balancer though in front of it all? Yeah, so if you have a load balancer, you have to share the well known directory among them and just have one machine. Uh, yeah, I just, you can just toss it up on the NS storage though. Yeah, so you have to share that well known folder. Yeah. Uh, and then, um, you can also have it so that in, in um, how to proxy the user agent of Let's Encrypt goes through just one server and goes to where you want it. Yeah, and then what, uh, that's to get the verification, and then you yeah. also have to share that certificate. Yeah. Um, if you automate that process, though, it's probably, I don't think it's that complicated of a thing to automate. Uh, another just pet peeve of mine is uh, SSL is gone. Nobody uses SSL anymore. It's only TLS. Like, if you're using SSL and not TLS, no browser will talk to you basically. Yeah, but it's easier to say SSL than TLS. <laughs> <laughs> <That's my opinion. laughs> uh, okay, any other questions or comments? Yeah. I couldn't remember. I, I just set one up on the weekend, but I can't remember if it asked for the bit length. Is it all? The pardon? The bit length of the, of the key, like 2,048 character, um, bits or, or higher, you know? It asked for that? No, that's what I didn't ask, but usually oh, when you're picking so it's, the key. Yeah, it's going to 2,048. Um, yeah, it's all automated. So I, I believe you could say request higher? like less secure keys. No, I think you'd want. Oh, you want higher? Yeah. Uh, if you wanted higher. I, I believe you could do higher. I believe the current it's nine nine thousand eight hundred and something sixty four. I don't. Know. It's I'm very bad at that math. But um, yeah, I don't. I don't know how you get that though. I believe you can request certain one that you level. Choose. Pardon? 8,192. Yeah, 8,192. You can ask for that level, but I don't I don't know if you'll get it back. You can try the test, um, the ACME test protocol, because that will give you a certificate of what you wanted back. It just won't be valid anywhere or signed. It's a great way to actually test the protocol if you don't want to have to, if you don't want to actually have to do anything, you can just test it quickly and see how it works and stuff like that. It's definitely great if you just want to test it on your laptop as well. Uh, anything else? All right, awesome. So um, you can find all the links and blah, blah, blah over here. Uh, these are the references and the images I used. I'll link this up at GTA Log. And that's it. Thank you very much.